My name is Christine. I work at Parker Wiley Elementary School. My name is Jan. I teach at Aletta Crichton School. It's an elementary school in Browns Mills. I grew up in Pensacola, New Jersey. I grew up the oldest of two sisters in Trenton, New Jersey. Fairly typical. I have an older brother, a couple years older than me, and I have a younger sister who's 13 years younger. I went to parochial school all my life, all the way through high school. I went to parochial school, Catholic okay. school. So I wore a uniform. I was in a class of 55 to 60. Yes, we had 55 to 60 in our classes. Six rows of 10. Girls in the front. No, boys in the front, girls in the back, because the boys were bad and the girls were good. That was grammar school, there was 60. High school, there was more like 30, 35. I went to college at Georgian Court University. College, I went to the College of New Jersey, formerly known as Trenton State. Oh. I majored in early childhood education, preschool to third grade. I majored in special education. And I got involved with special education when, when the school I was student teaching in um, had a position in, in a resource room and they offered me the job even though they didn't know what resource room is. And they said, if you go back to school, we'll give you the job. So back in 1973, when jobs were very scarce, you went back and you did whatever you could to get the job. So I took the job in resource room, figuring if I didn't like it, I could always get out. Actually, what it entailed was taking all the students that I had in kindergarten, well, because I student taught there, I, my student, my cooperating teacher said to me, don't worry about those kids. They're going to special ed. Just keep going. Don't worry about there were three or four of them. Pam and Michael, I can remember those two names. Don't worry about them. They're going to special ed. Keep going. Don't worry about them. They're going to special ed. Well, the following year, they did go to special ed. They were in my room. <laughs> so two of those children who we just pushed along, wound up in my class. And I could t got to spend a whole lot of time with Pam and Michael. <laughs> I don't remember the other kids, but I do remember Pam and Michael. I had a great student teaching experience. I actually did my student teaching experience um, where I work now, and I had a wonderful cooperating teacher who I am still friends with to this day. And uh, she was a great role model and a great example, and I had a great time doing my student teaching. I have cognitively impaired students. I have seven students now, I just lost one, and there's four adults in the class. And most people would say, seven kids, four adults, what do you do? You know, there's a two to one ratio, but sometimes we feel shorthanded. Every child is in their own unique place. Uh, they're usually functioning a couple years below, if not more, grade level. and fairly good behavior. Sometimes we lack some motivation, but my kids are usually really well behaved. And um, the name of the game is do it again, <laughs> try again, try harder. We'll go over this again tomorrow because we don't master our skills usually on the first try. But reinforcement and repetition is the name of the game. A mature class. I have a self-contained class with uh, behavioral and emotional difficulties. I have nine students, eight of them being girl, uh, eight of them being boys. I just got a new student who's a girl. Um, most instruction is in whole group in small groups, but most of the students are functioning on grade level. They're more in here for behavioral intervention. So we spend a lot of time 
role-playing different situations, showing them positive interactions, um, learning how to deal with emotions and frustration in more positive ways. And then once my students learn those techniques and they can apply them, then they are usually mainstreamed into a general ed class to see if they can carry their interventions over. You know, I, I really don't find teaching the children the difficult part. The difficult part is all the extra things that we're responsible for now. Um, lesson planning, Using the computer is supposed to be faster, but because my children are on one, or not on one grade level, I'm doing five reading groups. So I'm lesson planning for five different, with five different textbooks in just reading alone. And in math, I'm doing three different textbooks. So the general planning for the, for a week takes a lot more time than a general ed class. Um, in the classroom, it's, it's wonderful. The biggest thing is all the paperwork involved with it and the amount of time that is spent at home doing the work. And you would think after 25 years of teaching that I should have this down and it should be quick, but it seems to be taking longer. Lesson plans that I used to do that were two pages written now print out to be nine, ten pages typed. Wow. I'd agree with that too because you do have the aides in the classroom so you're not only planning for yourself you're planning right. for them you're planning to for them to do centers or activities that reinforce the skills so it is three times the three times the planning um, I'd say another challenge I don't know if it's the same for you as for me but because my kids are mainstreamed more to convince the general ed teachers that it's okay for my students to come into their class and that to accept them and welcome them and that they're smart children that just have some behavioral issues. I have three classroom aides. Uh, two of them, one has a degree in psychology. The second aide is on her way to a, a degree. She wants to be a special ed teacher. And the third aide is a, just a high school graduate, but they're all excellent. I referred to my classroom and my aides as we're the A team. They really work really well. Um, they get their lesson plan. I, I do lesson plans for the whole group. They know what they're doing on Monday for the whole week. And we divide up, you know, it's divide and conquer and everybody helps everybody else out. It really is a really good working situation. I have three classroom aides also. Um, one of my aides is currently going back to school to become a teacher, and the other two are taking part in a district uh, professional development where they take classes and earn college credits. Um, they are great. They come to school every day, try to have a, this is a new day attitude, let's start again. Um, there's a lot of teamwork. Because it's a behavior class, you know, everybody has their limit where they get frustrated, so we try to help each other out and, you know, acknowledge that. I need a minute to step away and another person steps in to, to help out. Uh, I have a very simple routine that works well for my guys. Uh, we have what we call tally marks or happy faces. When they do something good, they go put a happy face next to their name. And if they do something wrong, they get a tally mark. Tally marks accumulate sometimes. If they get five, they might lose some recess time usually doesn't happen. Uh, at the end of the day, if there's no tally marks next to their name, they get a big G because I send home a behavior note every night. And I used to put little G's next to each area that I was doing, and then I found I was giving a lot of G's at times. And one day somebody was really good, and I said, you earned a big G. And they just thought that was the best thing in the world, that the G which took less time to write than Ten other little G's meant more to them than G G G G all the way down. So I said, "You earned a big G," you know. So that's my behavior mod, real, real quick and easy.